Hi and welcome to the Science Cottage. Today we'll be looking at Lewis diagrams. Uh, how to draw them and how to interpret them. Now Lewis structures will be specifically for atoms that undergo covalent bonds. In other words, atoms of non-metals. By forming covalent bonds, the atoms will overlap their valence orbitals and share electrons. Alright, so on the periodic table, all of the atoms except for the noble gases undergo some type of, of bond in order to obtain a full valence orbital. Alright, the valence orbital is the outermost path around the nucleus in which you will find electrons. So we're not concerned with the core electrons or the nucleus. We're only concerned with the valence electrons because they are the only electrons that can take part in any type of bonding. You get metallic ionic bonds and then what we're going to look at today, specifically covalent bonds. Um, so that is between non-metals and a molecule will be formed, two or more non-metals. You'll see on your periodic table, it's quite easy to figure out how many valence electrons are available for each atom. In group one, one electron is available in the valence orbital. Group three, three electrons. Group six, six valence electrons and so on. When I talk about groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, I'm specifically referring to the Roman numerals. You'll see on your periodic table, group 1 here is indicated by the Roman number 1. Then skip the transition metals. Group 3 corresponds with the Western number 13 and it's indicated by the Roman number 3. Group 6 is group 16 indicated by the Roman number 6 and that corresponds to the number of valence electrons. Group 6, 6 valence electrons. 8, 8 valence electrons. So, most atoms want 8 electrons in their valence orbital. Some exceptions, hydrogen and helium, they've only got this small 1s orbital around the nucleus and the 1s orbital can only take a max maximum of 2 electrons. It's very tiny, it can't have more than 2 electrons. Also, if you look at the non-metals, for example, lithium, a neutral lithium atom will have three electrons. There's the 1s orbital. It's got one, two, three electrons in other words. And um, when lithium gives away its outermost, its valence electrons, because only the valence electrons will take part in bonding, when it gives away that valence electron to become a positive lithium ion, then that orbital ceases to exist. Only the 1s orbital remains around the lithium. Lithium is now a lithium ion. And uh, the same rule applies for the 1s orbital. There can only be two electrons. Okay, so let's have a look at the rules for drawing Lewis structures. First of all, you count the total number of valence electrons available. And then you arrange the atoms By doing the following, hydrogen will be on the end because hydrogen 
has only got that one S orbital, which is very small. Hydrogen can't go in the middle of a molecule and carry all of the other atoms. It's way too small. We call the atoms that are on the ends, we also call them terminal atoms. Then the other thing is the atoms with the lowest electronegativity will be in the middle, central. Let's look at this example, hydrogen cyanide. Hydrogen bound to a carbon, bound to a nitrogen. The total number of valence electrons are for hydrogen is in group 1, so it's got one valence electron that can take part in covalent bonding. Carbon is in group 4, so it's got four valence electrons available. Nitrogen is in group 5, so it's got five valence electrons. Remember, only the valence electrons take part in bonding. So, even though carbon has got a total of six electrons, only the four in the valence orbital will undergo bonding. That gives us a total of 10 electrons. And just by double checking, again, you'll see that all of those are non-metals, so they de will definitely undergo a covalent bond. Arrange the atoms, hydrogen is on the end, carbon's electronegativity is 2,5, nitrogen's electronegativity is 3, so carbon should be central, so this is already correctly arranged. Then we place at least a single bond between the, between the atoms. So we start by drawing a single bond. They are covalently bonded, so at the very least there will be a single bond. A single bond is one pair of electrons. That's single. So let's put one pair of electrons there, one pair of electrons there. So we've used up four of our available electrons. We've got six left. I'm just going to draw the orbitals. You don't have to do this. This is just to illustrate the concept. See the orbitals overlap and electrons are shared. So over here, this is where electrons are shared. And over there. The next step is now arranging the remaining electrons around the terminal orbitals. Hydrogen can't have more than two, so we're going to look at nitrogen. By the way, if you've only got two atoms next to each other, if there's no third, then you'll start with an atom with the highest electron negativity. Remember this step by remembering that the electronegativity is the way that an atom is able to draw or to attract electrons. Um, and nitrogen has got a higher electronegativity, so we're going to draw the electrons around the nitrogen first. We're going to use uh, electrons that are left until hydrogen, uh, nitrogen has got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six electrons that we've used. So now there are none left. We have to use those electrons. Let's check. Hydrogen is happy. It's got one, two. It's got a full orbital. Carbon's got one, two, three, four that it's sharing with the other atoms. It's not happy yet. It doesn't have eight electrons yet. Nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sharing two of them, but they, they're still in the orbital of nitrogen. So nitrogen now has um, eight valence electrons, so nitrogen is happy. All right, so next we're going to move around the electrons. You'll see what I mean. We're going to move them around so that each atom...
can have a full octet. An octet means uh, eight electrons in its valence orbital. Oct stands for eight. Think of an octopus, it's got eight arms. Octet, eight electrons. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the electrons that are around the nitrogen and share them with carbon. So I'm not taking them away, they are still in nitrogen's orbital. They are just shared now with carbon. So nitrogen still has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons and carbon now has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Still not happy. We're going to move those two as well. Didn't take them away from nitrogen, just shared them with carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for nitrogen. Both of them now has a full octet and both of them has got eight electrons in its valence orbital. So that now is a triple bond. Three, three pairs, one, two, three pairs will be a triple bond. And obviously then two pairs is a double bond. You can't have more than a triple bond. So the Lewis structure For the Lewis structure, we indicate all of the electrons, even the lone pairs. That is a lone. A lone pair. It stands alone. It's not shared with any other atom. So the Lewis structure will look like this. triple bond, three pairs, nitrogen, and the Cooper structure, for the Cooper structure, only the bonds are indicated, oh, wait, there, only the bonds are indicated using lines, one line for a single bond, and so forth, so hydrogen, single bond, carbon, triple bond, nitrogen, All right, you can double check, count, the total number of electrons and check that you're only using at 10. 2 plus 6 is 8 plus another 2, 10 electrons. All right, and you can double check that all of the atoms will have um, a full octet, a full valence orbital. All right, next example. Just going to make some spice. Use these steps again. These steps will work for 99% of uh, covalent bonding. There are exceptions that you need to know. For example, sulfur tri uh, sulfur hexafluoride. That's where sulfur undergoes six bonds with with fluorine atoms so if you count that if you add them up that is one one bond so it's two electrons in other words there are 12 electrons in the valence orbital that's called an expanded octet boron trifluoride There's only six electrons around the boron. Uh, so the boron will only have six electrons in its valence orbital. That's an exception. That's a smaller orbital. So those exceptions you need to know off by heart. But all the other molecules you can figure out by using these steps. Eight electrons in the valence orbital. Hydrogen wants one, one uh, valence orbital. That, that first valence orbital containing two electrons maximum. Um, if you need tutoring, please email me at thesciencecottage at gmail.com. That's for online tutoring or in-person tutoring in Pretoria. Please like the page if you're finding this helpful and subscribe to the channel. Next example, carbon dioxide. Following the steps, first add the valence electrons available for each of those atoms. Carbon is in group 4, so it's got 4 valence electrons. 
There are two oxygens, two oxygens. Each of them will have six valence electrons because they are in group six. So we're only allowed to use 16 electrons, no more, no less. Arrange the atoms. Carbon's electronegativity is 2,5. Oxygen has an electronegativity of 3,5. See if you can find those numbers on your periodic table. So carbon will go in the middle. And the oxygens with a higher electronegativity will go on the ends. Place at least a single bond. There might be double or triple bonds. Arrange those 12 electrons around the terminal atoms, the ones with the highest electronegativity that attract the electrons very strongly. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oxygen now has eight electrons. That oxygen has eight electrons in the valence orbital. We used up all of the available electrons. We can't just put extra electrons around the carbon because you're not allowed to add any electrons. There aren't any more valence electrons available. Now we have to move around the electrons that are in the orbits of each oxygen and share them with carbon until carbon also has eight electrons in its valence orbital. So we'll take those two, share them with carbon and then we work always going to try and do it as equal as possible for each atom so the molecule is balanced we'll take two more electrons put them in there now we can check there's the orbital just for the purposes of illustrating carbon one two three four five six seven eight sharing them with oxygen and with that oxygen. Oxygen still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and that oxygen the same. So the Cooper structure will look like this. Double bond, carbon, double bond, oxygen and then those lone pairs, the pairs of electrons will repel each other as much as possible because negative and negative push each other away and there's the other two lone pairs. The Cooper structure will look like this, oxygen, double bond, carbon, double bond, oxygen. Right, next one, carbon monoxide. This is one that is often used to catch you out. But by using our steps, you'll see that it's actually easy. Add the number of valence electrons, 4 for carbon, 6 for oxygen, which gives us a total of 10 electrons. Right, they are already arranged, there's nothing that goes in the middle, there are no hydrogens that need to go on the end specifically. So we're going to place at least a single bond. We've used up 2 electrons, now we've got 8 left. Start with the one with the highest electronegativity. It pulls the electrons toward itself the strongest. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've used up six. So those two electrons now need to go on carbon. Okay, so here's the orbital for carbon. Here's the orbital for oxygen. Two, one pair of electrons already shared. Those electrons are shared. Carbon only has one, two, three, four electrons thus far. It wants eight in its valence orbital. So again we're going to move these electrons around in the orbital, share them with carbon. That's a triple bond. Now carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but it's sharing those uh, six electrons with oxygen. Oxygen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now both of them will have a full orbital. Lewis structure. Cooper
superstructure, triple bond, oxygen. All right, so there you have it. The steps to draw a Lewis diagram under Cooper structure for covalent bonding for molecules that are formed.